Hello and welcome to part two of linear functions. All right, again, what we're doing in this video is we're going over the study guide. Don't watch this until you've done the study guide and you come up with questions on your own or you at least know an idea of how to solve it because otherwise you're just watching me do it. And All right, we are on number six. Ashley is making cookies for the cancer fundraiser. On average, she puts 12 M&Ms in every four cookies. And we need to represent this as a table, a graph, label the axes, and interpret what the rate of change means. Okay? Um, so, let's see. She's going to put 12 M&Ms in every four cookies. 12 M&Ms every four cookies. We can simplify that to three M&Ms every one cookie. And so if I make cookie my x and M&Ms the y because the cookie is the dependent, the independent variable. And so according to this, if I have one cookie and we have three M&Ms, if I had two cookies it would take me six M&Ms. And again, these points are can be all made up. I'm just going for a low number of points. Um, you could use 12, uh, four cookies and 12 M&Ms as well, but obviously it would, you need a bigger graph. Uh, if you have zero cookies, that means you need zero M&Ms. So that's enough to kind of give me some points. I'm gonna start at zero, zero. I'm gonna go over one and up three, somewhere around there, and over two, up six. Oh, that's not a good dot. Anyways, and then we're going to connect those points to get our, so we have our graph, we have our uh, table, and we have come up with a slope because since M is the, uh, the amount of M&Ms is our Y and cookies is the X, we have Y's over X, we have our picnic table equation, uh, or you can subtract them to get that, you'd get the same answer. Um... So we have our oh, label the axes. We have to do that. Okay, so the x is cookies. And again, sorry for my handwriting. I'm writing on my iPad with my finger. Not the best. And this is M and M's on the y axis. So if it says label the axes, make sure you label the axes so you know what this means. And interpret what it means in terms of the rate of change. It means that for every one cookie you add three M&Ms because of course our slope is talking about M&Ms per cookie per cookie alright so that's what this this particular rate of change means in the context of the problem moving on okay so we have a pattern here First question, how many squares would be in the seventh pattern? And then after that, we're going to write an equation for the pattern. If x represents the step number, y represents the number of squares. I think what would help on this, if we have a chart, x, y chart. So the x is the number, the step number. So we have 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Four, and y is the number of squares. So in the first pattern you can see that we have one square and in the second we have three and the third if you count that up we have five and in the fourth we have seven. So as we investigate our pattern each time we are adding two as we go up one here. So our slope our rise over run, our y over x, is going to be 2 over 1 for this equation. And so that's half of our equation, so y equals 2x. Remember, because it's in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. Slope is the rate of change, so we have that. And we're going to find our y-intercept. The way we do that is by going backwards to find when x equals 0 and if we were to go backwards, we have 1 each time we added as we went down. So if we're going to go in reverse, we'd have to subtract 2 
Uh, what plus 2 would give us 1? Well, the only number that would work for is negative 1. And even though that seems weird, the y-intercept in this case might not be relevant, but it'll help us, uh, 1, answer the question, and 2, help us find the 7th pattern or the 50th pattern or any number pattern if we just plug in for x. So write an equation for the pattern. Um, so 2x, okay, so here we go. So we have our equation, that's it. y is equal to 2x, and I'm going to change this to minus 1. And how many squares would be in the 7th pattern? What I'm going to do is plug in 7 for my x. 2 times 7 is 14 minus 1. That would mean we'd have 13 squares in the 7th pattern. Now, yeah, you could draw this out, whatever, continue the chart. All those, all those ways work. But once you have this, the equation is part of the question anyways, so once you have it, all you have to do is plug in 7, and it's a lot easier. So that's the way I would do. All right, now we got some easy ones here. Uh, number 9, find the slope of a line that goes through the points negative 3, 1, and 2, negative 3. That's just our picnic table equation, where we subtract our y's, subtract our x's, and find the slope of a line that goes through this, so here's what I would do negative 3, I'd write that here, and 2, negative 3, and I'm going to label each one an x and a y, so it's very easy which ones are my y's and which ones are the x's. So this is going to be negative 3 minus 1 over 2 minus negative 3. And you got to be careful with those double negatives there. So negative 3 minus 1, that's going to give us... Uh, Write our answer here. Negative 4, that's this part. Sorry that it's a little sloppy here. And then 2 minus negative 3, that would give me a positive 5. So the slope of, of a line that goes through that is negative 4 fifths or negative 4 over 5. Okay, this equation for number 10 is in standard form. If we want to write it in slope intercept form, that would just mean that. I'm going to move this up a little bit. That would just mean that uh, we need to get y by itself. If we want it in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And again, why did you do that? We're trying to get this y by itself over here. This is a hua. And on this side, 6 and minus 2x are not uh, like terms, but that's okay. I'm just going to bring them down, negative 2x plus 6, and y is still not by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by negative 3, and I get y equals negative divided by negative is positive, so I have 2 thirds x, that's my slope. 6 divided by negative 3 is minus 2. So here's our equation in slope-intercept form. y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. All right, number 11. The slope of the equation, 2x minus 3y equals 6. We can do a couple things. We could graph it and look for rise over run. But I think what I'm going to do is use some algebra and get y by itself. Because when y is by itself, it's in slope-intercept form. Find the slope is easy because, oh, I didn't even realize it's the same exact equation. Well, you can do less work than me and have y by itself ahead of time. We even already answered this question. Is the Because the slope of this line now it's just the number that's next to the x. Again, when we're saying slope, we don't need to say the x. We just say the number multiplied by x. So the slope in this equation is 2 thirds. Oh, okay, so for number 12, it just wants to find the x and y intercepts of that. That's easy too. So to find the x and y intercepts, we're going to do the cover up method. Now, I think you could probably already see from when we rearrange the equation in this format over here we know that negative 2 is going to be our y-intercept and of course that would work out if we cover up the x 
all we're left with is negative 3y equals 6. We solve that, we're definitely going to get a y-intercept of negative 2. So to find the x-intercept, we cover up the y. So if you can imagine this gone, we have 2x equals 6. Okay, I can do a little bit of algebra if I need that. 2x equals 6. To get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And get x equals 3. So now we have x-intercept and y-intercept. Moving on. And finally, we have the easiest questions of the group, the vertical and horizontal lines. So the slope of a vertical line that goes straight up and down is said to have either no slope or it is undefined. Of course, undefined would mean that you have zero in your denominator. So that's what a vertical line. 14 horizontal line. If you forget what hor horizontal means, think of the horizon. The horizon is a flat line. Slope of that is zero, like the top of the Z. So 13 and 14, those are easy. 15 was the equation of the line below written in slope-intercept form. So that's y equals mx plus b. What I'm looking for is first, uh, first, where does it, to find the b, the starting point, where does it cross this y-axis? So here's my y. The red line crosses right there, and that looks like the point of negative 5. All right, if you can't see it on the video, you can definitely see it on your study guide. All right, now we need to find the slope. Okay, so what we're not looking for here is we're not looking for the x-intercept. People confuse that. The x, when we have the x and y-intercepts, that's when we're working with standard form. Slope-intercept form wants slope. So if I kind of trace this line, I see a point here, I see a point here, and I see a point here. And if you're following along, to get from one point to the next, we need to go up 3 over 1. 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, which means our slope must be 3 or 3 over 1. Equation of a line in slope percent form would just be y is equal to 3x minus 5. Alright, and finally we come to our last section, the shout out page. Uh, to make sure you get credit for this, what I would like you to draw on each page is just why don't we do this. Just a quick, ooh, that's not good, a quick version of Batman on each page. And that's how I know you watch this video. And you can get some extra credit for that. Uh, I got a few shout outs here. First one goes to, well, it says subscribe to, he wrote it on this really weird paper, so it's hard to read, that one kid Maddie. So subscribe to that one kid Maddie. That's M-A-T-T-I. And you will get a cookie. So that's nice. Also, I want to do a shout out to Alyssa H in second period. She's the one that said I should put music in the background real low. So hopefully that helped. She also told me to give me a few pointers on the video. Hope it helped. Um, so this is our study guide. Hopefully, you watch this. It'll help you on the test. I promise. If there's anything you need, rewind it, watch. You can ask questions tomorrow or the next day in class. Hopefully, it helps you on the test. So. As I sign out, don't forget that you are important. You're cared for and you listen to. Appreciate all the hard work you guys do and watching the video. It will help you. I promise. Bye, guys.